darling of English comedy, Helen Ledra spent four decades as one of the country's funniest women. It's hard to think of an English television show that hasn't seen her face. What a charming, smashing blouse you have on. <laughs> it's a dress. Huh? I said to my doctor, I said, do I have ME? And he said, how much do you earn? So I said, uh, well, I told him. <laughs> and he said, no, you just run down, actually. <laughs> but it's on the stage where Helen Ledra first made her mark doing the rounds at London's Comedy Store in the early 80s. No, it's a very enabling thing to do babysitting because you do what you do in your own house but in somebody else's, which is quite interesting. And then you, just, you blame it on the children. <laughs> she then shot to fame as the wide-eyed magazine employer Catriona in the genius sitcom Absolutely Fabulous. And I don't think I have actually got the menopause. Um, although I do have to do the checklist before I leave the house to ensure I don't go out without my trousers on. <laughs> Again. <laughs> and most recently, we've seen her play the doting admirer of Ken Barlow on good old Coronation Street. Ah, Corrie. <laughs> Just iconic in every way, the writer and comedian is now getting real about the trials and tribulations of her career with a new memoir. It's called Not That I'm Bitter. <laughs> and we're pleased to say she joins us live from London to tell us more. Helen, good morning. How are you? Oh, good morning to you. How exciting to be with you in Australia sort of almost sort of kind not. of um, yes we love the title you lovely of your right, book I have oh. to say thank you well you know we're dressing for the mornings here <laughs> where <laughs> are the we're in the future for you um tell us what is it exactly that you are not so bitter about <laughs> well i was hoping and i you tell me i mean did you see some irony in the title because you know when you say, I didn't know what to call it, and then when you're talking to someone, then you're saying something about someone, and then you're, not that I'm bitter, then people know you might be a bit, but not really, yeah. because I'm not really, but I am slightly, because yeah. at this age, I'm kind of looking back and collecting up some disasters and some truths. People have said the book is alarmingly truthful, which I don't think is a compliment in time. <laughs> um, but, um, but I don't know how else to do things, because... You, you know, this is, you know, you have to be truthful and authentic if you want to make people laugh and know that you're not fibbing and exaggerating and embellishing. Well, Helen, I mean, with a career like yours, it's so incredible. And when you look back on it, you know, as this book maps out, you know, what stands out for you as like, you know, some of these times that were, you know, that bitter about? <laughs> well, I don't know if this happens in Australia, so you tell me. But um, we have quite it, this kind of hierarchy in in, in comedy. Mm. So it's it, it's a case of accepting your position. So I'm in the middle. Mm. I'm not in the elite. So I feel that I've actually helped the people stay in the elite bracket <laughs> by being in the middle. Yeah. Uh, not that I'm bitter. Um, and I started out as a stand-up comedian, as you can see there, so wringing my hands with anxiety yes. as I try and remember what I'm talking about. Um, and then got into the kind of some iconic uh, British comedy, you know, like Ab Fab indeed, you know. Um, but... Um, Gosh, it's so late at night here. What did you ask me? <laughs> that was good. I, like oh, I, I want to talk about Ab Fab. You know, when you started in the 80s, it was such a male-dominated scene, comedy. Mm. In Ab Fab, you got to write comedy as women for women. How exciting and refreshing was that? Well, Jennifer, I have to say, I could lie here because obviously lying is quite fun. But Jennifer Saunders wrote Absolutely Fabulous. And I think it caught the imagination. And do you love it in Australia? Oh, I'm obsessed with it. it. We're obsessed with it here. Right. But isn't that interesting? Because I think it just caught a moment of the late 80s, 90s, when there was just a ridiculous amount of money going on. You know, just uh, people would make TV pilots, like really rubbish programs, but there was just money. So, oh, we're doing a, a program about desks. Let's have a pilot, you know. <laughs> And, um, they, and we were making fun of PR people. Um, and so it was just such a colourful canvas. And then more and more very, very famous and intellectual people and, and pop stars wanted to be in it. But I was quite lucky because we called ourselves a Sloan Ranger, which we don't use now, a sort of very benign, useless person who just sort of hung around the office trying to be helpful, <laughs> but um, was pointless in every way, um, even to the plot. Um, <laughs> 
so we got to wear pearls and and look at the sam you know look at samples and handbags we never got to actually drink or eat the chocolates on the set but it what but you're right i mean i think it that program made so many people happy mm. for a very long period of time but i didn't know that you know what it's like when you're younger you just turn up do the job try not to annoy people not overstep your position um and be a bit of an airhead which of course um isn't too far from how I am. Well, speaking of trying to annoy people, I think in the book or you, you mentioned that you worked with the late great Rick Mayo, and he said to you, well, "Don't don't tread on my laugh lines." Was the advice he gave you? Mm -hmm. What was it like, you know, in the eighties, coming up in that period of time? You had Mayo, you had Ben Elton, all those like greats of comedy. What was it like being a female in that space? Yeah, well, I met them. I think it was in nineteen eighty two. It was the year of the stand up comedy at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. And I know you get a lot of amazing Australian comedians going to the Fringe, and we should go to Melbourne and all that. Um, and I was doing my 20 minute stand up comedian sandwich between two men in quite a small venue. And they were in the best venue with queues around the block uh, to see them. And that was the year of the stand up. And that's alternative comedy started. Um, but I think they quite liked me. One, because I think young people, when one is young, it's like a puppy. There's some attractiveness, isn't it? I mean, I'm not saying I don't like older dogs but <laughs> if you're younger there's something attractive about them sure. and um and they um they kind of yeah we connected as it were and um i think they took me under their wing but in a pleasant manner and because they saw that i was trying to do my genuinely mm. trying to write and perform my own material so it was um it was great they gave me some great jobs well you've had a wonderful career so far and we can't wait to see just how alarmingly truthful you are in this book, <laughs> Helen. It's a delight to chat. Oh, please buy it. Oh, we not will that indeed. I'm bitter. <laughs> not, that, not That I'm Bitter is available in all good bookstores now. Get it.